we're moving to the game jam, I, um, I want to know who that is back there, behind, right in front of me at the back. Somebody call that name out. Who goes there? Who are you? What does he look like? Uh, that would be sweet. I greatly appreciate that. Thank you. There you, there you go. They're making people sit okay, down. So, um, just want to let everybody know uh, and remind everybody you're watching Gunter's Universe and that we do this show every Tuesday at 9.30 p.m. Did, did this show start already? GMT 24. Uh, if you like the show and like to support our efforts here, please consider donating. Every dollar helps keep the show hiding. going, evolving, and I'm hiding right now. with beer. Uh, you can find the donation button on my website. Uh, so, thank you, and let's go back to the show. Okay, so let's talk about the mobile show's game going jam on. you all are, have entered I accidentally into the game jam entered and, after and, uh, it I'm started, sure which process and really it must have started early. It, uh, first it never starts early. You guys, congratulations to everybody that participated. I really thank you for, for giving us some really cool content to play okay. with. Um, and then I see if, for those that were they've able got to a South Park game, character, too, a Minecraft that's, that's character. Really awesome. I think so much of the community <laughs> wanted that, and, and thank you. Assassin's um, Creed. Let's show some videos of our guest games. Um, let me pull up teles Telescopic. I think I was selling, saying it wrong before. Telescopic. Telesco telescopic. I'm going to sit next to Mr. Q. I've got Violet, Adam J, Johnny, Road War, Cloak, Stave Style, Zero Weight, State, Henry, Ramify, Chryso Phrase, Camera Man, v -v -r Bro, VR Bro, Bernie, if Henry, I wonder, wonder who Henry that is, Everyday VR, VRG, IMP27, you want to talk about Wait, this? VR uh, Gimp, that'd be, going, that'd be cool, VR Gimp27. VR, what fire fire do you make this? Hollow tape. Sure, sure. You know, um, you know, you Trash. all know I love space, so obviously I had to do something space related. Right, here we have Drash talking uh, about his game. This is just something that uh, I wanted to do for myself because I look up at the night sky all the time, but there's really only a few stars or constellations that I still recognize or that I'm very familiar with, and so I wanted to set out to try to fix that using. Um, you know, something immersive and something that uh, sort of easy for the brain just to map one to one to what they see outside. Um, and, you know, beyond that, I wanted to be able to sort of do like a deep dive on what you see out there. Um, it's pretty cool. You know, like in, in this, this app here, I have like a long exposure view, so you can kind of see like what happens when you train your telescope on that area of the sky for you know, a couple nights or a week or something, you know, kind of like you're seeing on the screen now. Um, so I, I was actually pretty happy with that, even though there's still a lot of work to do. Um, I was originally intending for all of that to be stereoscopic 3D, which of course is not realistic because at that distance, nothing's going to be stereoscopic. But, you know, I still wanted to make it fun. And I didn't really get to that. But um, beyond that, you're seeing here in the menus, there's uh, there's a whole little sort of process that I'm doing to sort of serve up these little challenges for the players to to tackle at their own pace, uh, to kind of help them sort of with the memorization of everything that there is up there in the sky. Uh, just using something called spaced repetition to sort of know, like, like they use that with like flashcard systems. Like uh, you, you get an answer right or wrong, whatever. The system knows how long it before it should show you that flashcard again for maximum retention. Uh -huh. So I've got that built in there, even though it's not not very effective because there's not a whole lot of data in there. Because I got so far through this project and then realized, oh shit, I have a, not much time Drash to put like, guy. all the, the data in there, all the stars and all the, the quizzes and things like that. So it's pretty bare bones right now and that's why I've called it sort of a limited demo. Uh, so at some point I'll put together the, the full version, which will just have a lot more, uh, you know. And I've I've gotten permission from a very uh, very talented astrophotographer uh, named Rogelio Bernal Andreo, uh, nice. and purchased a bunch of his images that he spent a long time doing. They're like big mosaics covering just giant areas oh, of the sky. And uh, that's kind of what you're seeing when you're looking at the long exposure view. So instead of just being a bunch of mm. small little patchwork pieces of just little galaxies and things like that, you're seeing a lot. 
So, uh, awesome. yeah, there's a lot I want to do for it. There's just a matter of space stuff coming out to, with uh, this VR technology. I mean, yeah, I really have learned a lot, and I was surprised how much I, I figured out. You yeah. know, I thought I was just going to have it's to go insane. to the hints and, and, and make it all happen, but I all didn't really know that much. Stuff. But I could uh, I figure I, now I know that Sirius is the, the bright brightest star in the sky, and it's part of that <laughs> triangle constellation, which Sirius I believe one of those is part of Orion, king. maybe, uh, it, or it's at least Sirius really close. The king star. Um, so yeah, I, I think Beetle, that, Beetlejuice, right? yeah. Yeah, Beetlejuice, yeah. And so now I can spot it, because I could always spot Orion. That's kind of the one. Beetlejuice, what? Cool. Oh, cool. Nope, don't, nope. Don't say it again. Beetlejuice. I had to say it the third time, man. Ah. Oh, I thought that was a, a second. Um... Yeah, somebody needs to get the Beetlejuice avatar in here. That would be fun. <laughs> cool, yeah, I really love your title. Let's take a look at Phase Shift. Um, what Code of Frost over there developed. Code of Frost? His Phase um, Shift you game. you want to talk about, you know, your inspiration and what's going on, that'd be great. Oh, you're playing the old video. <laughs> Let's all go. Uh, I, I can do it. I can do it. I sent you the newer one in Skype if you have that open. Um, but no, it's totally cool. Um, that was, I think, like our what our third milestone yeah, video yeah. there. Yeah, that's cool. It's actually yeah, showing some yeah, of the uh, cool. programmer that's art. Yeah, um, yeah, I think yeah, some yeah. of the, the newer one. teams may have made it in there. Uh, but, newer one's just better. Yeah, we have the newer way. one that's more like a actual trailer. This video, has like every thing I you know Skype, worked on. Maybe a better representation. Don't worry about it. No, it's cool. Yeah, um, yeah, I, mean, I, I can that, certainly you know, talk a little. There's there's voiceovers on it. On it know, so I'm not sure if I'll talk over the trailer, help, but you know, uh, yeah, you can see it's basically a uh, cinematic 2.5D platformer. So I mean, it's, it's pretty, pretty much 3D, obviously, because you're in VR. Uh, but it's 2.5 because you're pretty much running on one axis most of the time. Uh, although we can certainly play around with that, so we'll see where that goes. But yeah, uh, basic inspiration on that was. Um, a lot, of, a lot of things, actually. Um, I'm a pretty big fan of the old classic adventure games, like old school point and clicks. You know, the old old platformers like Mario. You know, the we're Prince like of the Persia. same guy, uh, Prince of Persia. Another oh, one cool, that cool. really inspired this one is Played uh, all of out them. of this world, aka another all world, of them. multiple uh, which times. Was mostly developed by Loved by it. one guy um, for the old, I think, Super Nintendo, if I remember correctly. You um, sir did a good job. You know, and I'm we like kind of this before we thought this one was pretty cool. Platformers looking. like Braid and, and uh, some of the other ones. I can't believe inspired you're it, here as well. Um, Drash you know, is the here. art style being retro pixel art. And there's a techno uh, props uh, to my artist Sirido, who I think guy. is in the audience here. I can't read his name. Hey, Kobe hey. and Sam as well, right, our, tech, right. our 3D modeler. Um, so we really wanted to focus on kind of a uh, different art style for the for the jam, especially being mobile. I wanted to do something simple, uh, you know, that would be able to run smoothly on a phone. So uh, we kind of landed on the, the pixel art style because we haven't seen that uh, done in VR yet. Great evening. Um, especially in a platformer. Yeah, I think there might have been one or two other we go. demos. Yeah, but, man, yeah this uh, is the one. Monday morning, cool, so finally. About to become anything huh. but ordinary. Cool, finally. My name is Dr. Hoffman. For the past Gosh. 12 years, I've been working in solitude on a secret project. Others have theorized that we could be living within multiple dimensions, but I believe I have created a compound oh, that allows me to yeah, actually peer really into these cool. other worlds. Strange visions have been plaguing yeah, my this mind. Awesome. Colossal alien cities, ancient deserts and distant lands. Flashes of imagery far too detailed and vivid to have simply been conjured by my imagination. One that reminded by me focusing a bit my of mind's uh, eye, I can actually interact with these other dimensions. Almost as if our worlds were meant to be intertwined. I seem to be on the verge of discovering the true nature of our universe, as I have begun to manipulate the threads upon which the very fabric of our reality is built like upon. A 2D character in the, the 3D further down world. this rabbit hole I go, the sweet. more chaos and power that surrounds me. But I can feel this my life's calling. I'll find out how deep this rabbit hole goes, and I'll be damned if anyone will stop me. Dual yeah, reality yeah. games. So that's uh, pretty much the trailer. That's pretty sweet. Well done. That's uh, you know, I love Prince Persia and the games that you were mentioning. Love Prince Persia. Uh, I'm also interested. I don't know. If Albert Hoffman is is related to, uh, or is or inspired, he inspired is. from. from <laughs> Indeed, you yeah. caught the reference. Uh, funny story, right on, actually. Right I uh, uh, 
we were kind of going back and forth, and the story changed, you know, a couple times during the the, the 30 day jam, and we, uh, you know, I wanted to have something unique, uh, you know, a unique VR mechanic for a platformer, so we came up with the, the 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 whole idea of phase shift with this multiple overlapping realities being the main concept, and uh, we weren't sure exactly how it was actually going to be implemented. Um, so I wanted to start with just a simple platformer game because it's you know comfortable and, and <clears throat> very familiar uh, a genre. You know it's been been done uh, a thousand times over, so it's kind of you know easy uh, format that's been established that uh, I figured would be cool to build on for a game jam. You know you really want to simplify um, before you you know build too big of a scope and then you end up not finishing anything, which you you know has sure, happened. Sure. So that was kind of the main thing for coming up with a platformer, and then. Uh, the lens idea, I'm not even sure how that came about. We had a couple different ideas on how we were going to peer into this other uh, world. I know we were talking about at one point having like an object, like a relic that you, you would uh, be holding and it would kind of cast an area around the player uh, that would allow him to see that other realm or possibly or like, like your hands throw the object in, in that, you know, you would be almost casting a window oh. that way. And so we had a couple different ways. Uh, also like played around with like actually flipping back and forth between the two environments with a button click. Uh, and then we just tried, I just tried, I did a little prototype with this lens idea where there, you're able to see both realities at once. And it just kind of clicked because it, it works with your, your gaze, you know, your head look, uh, which I think is, the, you know, a strong point of VR, obviously. Um, so we just wanted to capitalize on that. And so that's kind of how it came about, uh, you know, being, being this lens thing. And then the Hoffman thing, back to that question, was... Uh, <laughs> yeah, it is a reference reference to the good old the good Dr. Albert. Uh, it's funny because I uploaded uh, the first milestone for the game on Bicycle Day, which I think was the 19th of April. Uh, oh, right. That was oh, the right. due date, so it was just funny. And then I realized that the next day there was a post on Reddit uh, about I forget what it was an article about like the psychedelic. Uh, community involved in, yeah, in actually, creating yeah, VR. An upload, an VR upload article? VR article? I think it was, yeah, and it was talking about, it mentioned Bicycle Day in there, and I was like, wait a minute, that was yesterday? I was like, that's when I uploaded my yeah, <laughs> my yeah. first milestone. Like, I didn't even realize at the time when I posted it, and if people don't know Bicycle Day, I don't know if you want to explain what that is, but basically it's kind of like a somewhat of a holiday, I guess, right? I don't know what a bicycle uh, day yeah, is. Yeah, it's a day where everyone right, 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 which is kind of interesting. Uh, <laughs> right, right, I actually right, can't yeah. explain it very yeah. well, but it's like Hoffman. Yeah. Go you know, the uh, basically, basically it's the day bike. he wrote, yeah, it's the infamous day that uh, Dr. Albert Hoffman, who's a, a Swiss chemist, uh, synthesized the first uh, LSD experiment, basically in his laboratory, and accidentally dosed himself. <laughs> and ended up like freaking out a little bit and was like, oh, I'm going to ride my bicycle home from work because, you know, I don't feel well. And then he just ended up having this amazing journey uh, on his bicycle ride home, which, you, you know, you can read in his book and stuff. So it was kind of like the first <laughs> first trip. Uh, but it's known as Bicycle Day, yeah, which is on April 19th. And ended up uh, making our character Hoffman because he's a, you know, he's a chemist who discovers this random chemical which uh, lets him peer into these other realities. So it seemed like a cool little uh, tribute to him. Uh, it was just a weird string of coincidence to find out that we actually uploaded the, the, the first LSD milestone on, the game. <laughs> on Bicycle Good Day. Job, it's just a really weird, <laughs> strange thing. Uh, so yeah, that is a, a reference to him, actually. <laughs> I love that so much. Uh, I want to do a tribute to Terrence McKenna, who uh, is also uh, you know, uh, sort of part of the whole psychedelic um, uh, I don't know lore and 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 basically spoke about it and kind of pushed the envelope in that realm, um, which was also mentioned in that upload VR article written by Stan. Matt Turndrup at the Mad Changer. He was uh, he was uh, <laughs> one of the first guests here at Gunter's University. So things are coming yeah, full circle. Like it's very, very wow. synchronistic just, and interesting. Those characters are perfect. That's awesome. For this yeah, I know. I, uh, we also met. Uh, a I feel like I'm actually there. Oh my god. I forget his name exactly, Roger Isig, I believe, movie? when I was out at PBR. Yeah, 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 Kyle, yeah. you can talk about that. He was, he's super into that stuff, too. We were talking insane. all about McKenna, and he's, oh he's done some VR uh, work. I can already imagine him. it. I forget the name of the, the app or experience <laughs> that he did, but uh, it's probably worth DMT, checking out. DMT. Uh, yeah, I know yeah, a lot about that as well. I know Roger, I would say super well or anything, but we've hung out in VR a few times, and I'm a big fan of his work. His Facebook page shows... So much of his psychedelic sort of inspired paintings and 
and other art pieces, and it's just prolific. And uh, he's from Australia, so we don't get to sync up too much because of that. Uh, he was on my previous show, Virtually Incorrect, in, in RiffMax uh, that I started a year ago. Um, and uh, I also was able to, to borrow some of his artwork that I put behind me on that set, a uh, big uh, psychedelic sort of eyeball. And, uh, yeah, I love that guy. So this all ties in together, and that DMT experience uh, that he has uh, is I, I want to see more like that. Uh, I, you know, I want to see if we can push VR into some of those realms to, you know, as people can experience things like that without actually having to try the drugs. A lot of people don't want to do that. Um, and that was Terrence McKenna that he had narrating or, or talking behind that. So. So anyways, that's really cool stuff and, 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 and super rad. So, uh, yeah, I loved playing your title. Uh, I loved the challenge that I got. You know, I was getting pissed off and like, God damn it, you know. Why did I hit, did I hit, the, hit the left bumper or whatever it was whatever again? It was again. <laughs> Stop doing that. Stop doing that. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely not an uh, easy title. We made it uh, pretty challenging for sure. So if you got through it, man, kudos. Uh, yeah, I want more. Yeah, I want things, more. Definitely some things I want to do to probably make it a little easier, at least to, for the beginning levels. But I think for a jam, it's good uh, people are able to get through it. So, cool, man. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we also have Rev here who uh, created Ends Well, uh, another game jam entry, uh, which Boo. I played in. Boo. And, and oh, wait, oh, wait. Um, no yeah, boo you for creating yeah. something that was fun to play. <laughs> Tell us about disrespect the frog. The video. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what. Before I, before you do that, uh, I have to add a, a few things here for for Coda. Uh, Four nineteenth, yeah. April nineteenth is actually my birthday, and oh, my wow. dentist name is Doctor Hoffman. Uh, so I'll just throw that in there. <laughs> throw that in there. <laughs> what is it all this? It weirder by the minute. That's what I'm saying. It's McKenna so weird, predicted all weird. of this. Your damn time wave maybe, zero. Maybe. Yeah, time wave zero, Zach. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe VR is really ushering this this in, or something crazy like that, or maybe I'm just tripping right now. Now there has been some strange coincidences. Talk about it's Rev Kyle's kind game. Of weird. Yeah, yeah. They, I yeah. mean that's kind of what that article was about too. Like some of the well. people from fun. that community had, you know, I never got uh, their, the their hand so in, in bringing this about some of the early VR again, technology and stuff. I guess was, I can't created by some of those the same thinkers. So it's uh, it is kind of a weird web. But it does, uh, a lot of it seems kind of hey. intertwined in hey, some you. regard. Uh, hey. Definitely interesting. Hey. Totally. Look at me, Gimp. So, the guy you don't meet is uh, Deep Rifter, by the way. He's, uh, he was out there, I think. Well, he wasn't at SVVR, but he's in a lot of these social places. He, he writes on Road to VR, and uh, he's all into this stuff. So, Rep. He writes on the Road to VR. Yeah. You, you don't really want to talk about ends well, do you? I mean, it, 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 it didn't even make it to the finals. I feel like I got the shaft a little bit, but oh well, you know. When you, when you judge games by not playing them, you know, I, I always I, I want to know why. I want to know was my video that bad? Yeah. Is the screenshot that bad? Is the description that bad? Uh, Is there I don't no know. people that can take enough time to to play them? Well, I don't know. I mean, there's that conspiracy theory that some people, some of the judges didn't even play the finalists. Uh, uh, that's been floating around the the VR space. I don't know if you heard about that or not. Yeah, I saw that. That thought that was kind of strange. It's uh, I don't know. It's I mean, ridiculous. I had some it's thoughts ridiculous. on I that. that. I didn't hear that. I'm not. I mean, I don't know. There's a lot of pieces to it. I think you know, with yours, because uh, you made it. Did you even make it to the finals, Kyle? No. Okay. No, mine did not no, make it to the finals. I don't know, I think, you know, obviously with with this jam, they were being selective with what they wanted to see, so it doesn't necessarily mean that you're, you know, have a bad game or that anybody that didn't make it into the finals is, like, not a good well, title, not. but it may not just be what they were looking they for were from whatever, you know, end goal themselves. they're trying to achieve. Um, you know, I think that's maybe at least one perspective to it. You know, there could be a, a title that's superior to all of ours that didn't even make it into the finals that we just haven't played yet, but it just wasn't either... Uh, visible enough to them or, you know, didn't stand out as far as, like, a marketing perspective. Like, you know, they want stuff that, that can sell the platform, I think, a bit. So they want to have titles that represent their name in some capacity. Um, so if it doesn't jive with what they're doing, that's not a diss to, like, oh, your game sucks, but it's just not, you know, their exact wheelhouse, maybe. Um, I think, you know, that's one piece to it. And, and there's probably a lot more, you know, with the money being involved and God only knows what else they're, they're doing over there. Um, so I wouldn't take it as like a slight, personally, uh, you know, Oculus looks for whatever they're looking for, 
you know, and when I was making a game, I was like, whatever happens, it doesn't matter. As long as I think I have a cool game, then that's that's what's important. So, you know, I achieved that, and then whatever comes out of the contest is just kind of like a bonus. So that was that was my kind of mind state with it. So, um, you know, I'd hope other people that didn't make it in the finals don't, you know, I could see it being disappointing, uh, but it certainly doesn't mean it's like a, they're not the end-all be-all as far as judging Who's to say that they're the best judges uh, to judge VR anyway? Um, you know. Well, the, and the, yeah, I, yeah, I agree with I agree with you, man. And, and and I do. I look at this and say, okay, I made a game, fun for all ages, pretty addictive, challenging, replay value is amazing, uh, runs at 60 frames per second on every version of Android out there. Uh, you didn't play it, and you That's didn't let it into the finals. There's a huge flaw with your judging, not my game. So I don't, yeah, you know, like you said, they're not the the say all on this type of thing. I mean, that's no. that's that's obvious to me now. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, that's that's a good point though too. Um, the judging, I, I mean, that's, the whole thing could have went smoother for sure. Does it people do this where you just drop, you know, in all aspects? Where you just drop your Oculus on your head sometimes like, and you just uh, try to, like, look out of where you were looking a, before? probably another story behind that, I'm sure, that maybe... Or am I the only one that does? But, yeah, I was, I was going back to that thing you said, there was a post that some guy posted. It was, like, that multiplayer game, I think, and they had posted some stats uh, of their server showing what their traffic, their bandwidth was during the, the final days of the judging, and they said that their their servers didn't get hit at all or something. Uh, no idea. Right, yeah, that's right. I read that. I read that. But, uh, you know, is that just somebody who's salty making up some crap screenshot, or is that a server issue, or did nobody actually play it? It's, uh, it's pretty strange. I would guess that nobody played it, or at least they didn't play the multiplayer aspect of it. The mm-hmm. Note 4 that were probably used didn't have Wi-Fi connection, which sucks. Yep. Yeah. Wasn't that a Wi-Fi only multiplayer game? Oh, game, yeah, it was local only, I think, wasn't it? Well, they wouldn't have yeah, server. It yeah, it doesn't mean anything, mean. man. They probably just shut off all their their airplane mode stuff or whatever. Just so it wasn't tracking themselves. Right, but it also means that that feature of the game didn't get tested. Unless right. they were testing locally over their own Wi-Fi, you know, not going out to the internet and phoning home. Oh, so. oh, well, okay. That's Valid, Carmack valid. doesn't want his stats to be seen on the on the uh, leaderboards. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get this over with, Gunter. Play the darn video, and I'll, and I'll <laughs> talk over top of it. <laughs> this is my old video, by the way, which actually shows less. Um, so you start off in a little kid's room. You are a third-person character watching this poor little frog trying to escape. Um, you get some dialogue as you go back and forth between the snail and the frog. Snail tells you how to escape, and then in exchange you consume him, uh, which was very nice. Uh, the purpose of this game is to appeal to all ages. It's uh, cynical. It's funny. It's uh, got a little bit of the uh, kind of Animal Crossing type mass of thing murder. going on. Uh, mass murder, indeed. A bit. Yeah. Um, but hey, survival of the fittest and circle of life and all that Phil Collins bullshit. So. It's an educational experience. It is, indeed. It really is a fun game and it's kind of stressful too. Well, thanks. I mean, you, I, you know, I, I I hurried up and made a DK2 version hoping that other people would play it. And I think like maybe 12 people have played it. So, uh, yeah, kind of funny. I started playing it thinking it was going to be kind of a calm, fun experience, and I got really, like, hot and sweaty by the time I was done, man. It was just an intense experience trying to actually get a high score. Yeah, the, the, the fun thing is, in terms of the high score, is I actually reward you for dying. Uh, the longer you play it, the higher your score can get. Plus, there's yeah, this I on-running was, joke. I was aware of that. Yeah. You came on before, so I ended up getting the highest score, but unfortunately, um, when I started the game, I just I hit start too fast not realizing I needed to add my name. Ah, you didn't add your name, yeah. So there's one. this on-running joke, too, in the game where uh, after you've eaten this, the first snail, all the rest of the little critter friends ask you, say, hey, where's the snail, where's the snail? And it's kind of just an on-running joke kind of thing. <laughs> this level here, uh, which I call the road, so you have the room, 
uh, the yard, uh, the road, and then the last one is the park. Uh, each one of these levels uh, individually was created with a unique perspective of adding to the different skills that you've learned from previous levels and making it that much harder. But this is the level everybody loves. Several people said I should make this just be the game by itself and not do the rest of it. But uh, I kind of like the story, so no. <laughs> it's like Frogger. They probably like the Frogger. Yeah, Frogger aspect. No. Right on. Right. Yeah, I got a lot of really good criticism. I mean, I got a lot of really constructive uh, criticism well. about the game. <laughs> Uh, a lot of uh, suggestions, a lot of input, yeah, and uh, I think they're all great. Uh, my goal is probably to not touch this game. This game is done. But I uh, have. This game will exist in its current form for the rest of its life. I might, might make a cardboard version or something like that, but I'm not going to add anything more to this game. It is done. No, that's right. It's completely playable. runs in 60 frames per second, even on Lollipop. Uh, it's a complete full game that can be played from beginning to end has huge replay value and a high score leaderboard. So, uh, it's done. Uh, now, Lenswell 2 might exist somewhere down the road, uh, depending on how my new career is going. Uh, I may have time to work on that on the side. And I guess the oh, learning experience is sort of the, the, I think, the biggest thing. I mean, um, you know, getting feedback, going through this process, uh, I think that's a big deal, really, you know, is a good opportunity in, in that regards. And I'm curious if, uh, you know, the previous games in this game has, has helped you, uh, whether enhance these skills or get more exposure as a developer to help you with the job that you're getting, which, of course, we don't know anything about that, but it's something I just thought of. I'd be curious to know. Yeah, it's, it's funny because as I've gone through an iterative... That was kind of a piss poor Leroy Jenkins. It's supposed to be like Leroy Jenkins, like that, or like, or like Leroy Jenkins, like that. For now on, I'll be like Leroy Jenkins. No, nobody, nobody will like that. All right, time to take care of the pets and do the dishes. Till next time. I'll see you later, Gunter. I'm kind of interested to see what the techno restroom is. I wonder what the techno restroom is. You guys want to see that? You guys want to see what the techno restroom is? Oh, I've been in here before. This is the techno restroom. Got a bunch of things there and a bunch of things here, a bunch of things there and a bunch of things here. A laptop over there and a mask right here. A guy standing there with some toast right here. You can't even jump. Jump is not allowed. No, no jumping and no, no jumping. Okay. They got a lamp and an Oculus and a film reel and, and a doctor sp speaking spell and... A doctor. Did I say doctor? I said doctor. <laughs> they have a doctor. Well, they do. Shut up. You guys just don't see it. I'm in VR. You're not. I see things you don't see. Like doctors. Okay. And that is the techno lust room. Hello. Bye. Nero Jenkins. Like that. All right. Those are going to show up very well on the screen here. I took a little video before the show because I can't bring in pictures any other way. So um, it's a little bit blurry, but I think that's some, you know, renderings. I think Palmer said that this might be ancient stuff. Um, and that looks like maybe there's a forward-facing camera there. Uh, and let's step through this pictures a little bit. crazy that all this leaked today. We got all this, you know, a lot of stuff to look at. Wow, I didn't notice the pre-order button. I tried clicking it. It didn't do anything. <laughs> you know, actually, I had a whole bunch of other pictures, but when I used OBS to capture it, 
uh, which I thought was my browser, apparently was just capturing one tab of Chrome. So there's a whole bunch of others, of all the other stuff, like the, the SID and um, other cool stuff, but we don't get to see them on the show. Um, but I'm sure you know everybody's seen them by going to the subreddit. And finally, with Oculus News, the logo. Um, you know, do you like the new one or the old one? And Boo. Do you like it? Rev likes it. Boo. Boo. I imagine there's gonna be a lot of boos. I think that's what I read, and and um, I'm not so much of a booer, but Skyzo commented uh, likes the old one. The new one is so generic. Um, you probably can't even copyright it. Everyday VR. Uh, responded, you're correct actually, the new logo is not copyrightable because it's too simple. Basic shapes don't contain the spark of creativity required for copyright under U.S. law. It can still be protected under trademark, but those protections are different. Nobody can prevent you from, uh, for example, uh, selling shirts or posters with Oculus's new logo on it, provided that you're not using it in uh, the marketing for identi identifying yourself. And uh, finally, um, Welcome to Jazz Club says the old one was literally a quick look uh, symbol in Finder on OS X and uh, a familiar icon you know, used in many other places, which which I was always familiar with and, and did wonder about them using that. So I definitely think a new icon was, uh, was needed, a new logo. But, uh, yeah, I'm not sure about the new one. I, I kind of like it because it's so simple. Um, it could fit, you know, in very small, um, uh, you know, in tiny things like a business card. Um, so I think that makes some sense, and it is the shape of the rift, very distilled down to its most minimal. Um, but I'm not sure. Uh, anybody have comments, Drash? Um, yeah, you know, I didn't really have a thought either way on what which one I liked more. It's just kind of a shock that they did it, but um, on thinking about it, I think it makes sense. The racetrack, a lot of people shared that impression. I've seen um, little racetrack logos that look like just like that with um it's kind of like the, when i first saw it, some words on it of, with the name of the racetrack um it also interestingly uh bears the the oval is pretty much the same shape as the oval around nintendo's logo um just a little bit uh thicker so um if i were a conspiracy theorist i'd be like hmm so oculus is right. working with console manufacturers now and um but i i think that's just a coincidence I think it might be Sega. If anybody, they got the Hedgehog and the uh, Fox, are the two, their two main characters they've announced working on internally, which I think are uh, Sonic <laughs> characters, if I'm if I remember correctly. <laughs> so they I'm look sure like that's a coincidence, like. but it's pretty funny. Sonic and Tails. Yep. All right. Before we move into the game jam, I, um, I want to know who that is back there behind. Right in front of me at the back. Somebody call that name out. Who goes there? Who are you? What does he look like? Spirey. I can't really tell. He's very, very. What is it? Spirey 8989. Spirey, sit your ass down. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen you in here. If, if um, you can use E to sit, and um, there's only some levels that you can sit on there in the audience. Uh, you can obviously. They're making level people sit people down. Sitting on, and then a few levels back from that, and. Uh, that would be sweet. I greatly appreciate that. Thank you. There, you, there you go. They're making people sit okay, down. So, um, just want to let everybody know uh, and remind everybody you're watching Gunter's Universe and that we do the show every Tuesday at 9.30 p.m. Did, did the show start already? GMT minus four. Uh, if you like the show and like to support our efforts here, please consider donating. Every dollar helps keep the I'm show hiding. going, evolving. And I'm hiding fed right now. With beer. Uh, you can find the donation button on my website. Um, so thank you and